say thank you. Lord, we thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for awakening us this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, giving us, dear Lord, a new chance and a new opportunity. Dear Heavenly Father, to come out to your house of worship and praise on this morning to lift up your holy name. Dear Heavenly Father, we know, dear Lord, that we can pray at home. Dear Heavenly Father, we can sing at home also. Dear Heavenly Father, but there's nothing like being in your house, dear Lord, with your people. Dear Heavenly Father, lifting you up. Dear Heavenly Father, each and every opportunity, Lord, that we have. We thank you so much, dear Heavenly Father, for forgiving us of our many sins, all of our shortcomings, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you. Also, dear Heavenly Father, for the many blessings, dear Heavenly Father, that you have bestowed upon us, dear Heavenly Father, just getting up, dear Heavenly Father, is a blessing, Lord, and we thank you for that. Riding, dear Heavenly Father, to your facility, dear Heavenly Father, is a blessing, dear Lord, and we just thank you for that. We just thank you, dear Lord, every time we have a chance, dear Lord, and Lord, we can say thank you all day, and it still would not be enough, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for, us, for health and strength. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, for shelter, dear Heavenly Father, thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for finances, dear Lord, that we not only, dear Heavenly Father, can bless your kingdom, dear Heavenly Father, but we can live a life, dear Lord, that's comfortable, Lord, and we just praise you, dear Heavenly Father, for that. Lord, we come, dear Heavenly Father, lifting up our pastor on this morning, dear Heavenly Father, knowing, dear Heavenly Father, that uh, he's been through some things, dear Heavenly Father, but you continue, Lord, to strengthen his body. Dear Heavenly Father, and thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for what you've done, not only for him, dear Heavenly Father, for there are many, Dear Lord, who have been sick, many who are sick, dear Heavenly Father, many who have been bereaved and many who are bereaved, dear Heavenly Father, and we just thank you, Lord, for what you've done for them. Dear Lord, you've given us, dear Heavenly Father, another chance, dear Heavenly Father, we come and start a new year, dear Lord, of 2016. All the things, dear Heavenly Father, that have gone good and have also gone bad in 2015, Lord, they're in the past. And right now, Lord, we have another chance, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, we just come praying for those, dear Heavenly Father, in your service on this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, that we will give you all the praise and all the glory, Lord, that you deserve. Dear Heavenly Father, for we came to your house to worship. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray, Lord, that worship, Lord, will fall from our lips. Dear Heavenly Father, there are those, dear Heavenly Father, whose hearts are troubled. Dear Heavenly Father, with situations going on in their lives, but Lord, we know that you can make everything right. Dear Heavenly Father, again, bless our service, dear Heavenly Father, thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, for our choirs who are going to sing Zion songs to us this, this morning. And bless the man, dear Heavenly Father, who will break the bread of life unto us. Dear Heavenly Father, and that we, dear Heavenly Father, would accept your word. Dear Heavenly Father, when we leave your building here today, dear Heavenly Father, we'll be better than we were when we came. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? I don't know what I, as I was on my way to service this morning, I just felt this old school song. It says, we come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord. Look at somebody and say, Lord knows I come this far by faith. If you know this song, say we come. We come.
this morning. I was going to stop but Deacon Hutchison gave me that beat. Everybody clap your hands. This is how they used to do it in my grandmother's church. They used to say like this. In the Lord in the Lord, in the Lord, in the Lord, stay on the battlefield. In the Lord, in the Lord, in the Lord, I'm gonna treat every. In the Lord, I got it right. In the Lord, in the Lord, in the Lord, in the Lord, in the Lord. That's it. In the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on. Y'all may be seated. God bless you. <laughs> Let's say amen. Let's say amen again. Amen. We are going to stay on the battlefield until. Amen. Amen. We're getting ready now for our benevolent offering for certainly it is a time that all of us can participate. Uh, we can give because the Bible teaches us it's more blessed to give than to receive. Benevolent offering is an offering by which we give. And if someone in the community, in the church, family of God needs assistance, uh, this will be by which we will be able to help them. So if you Please, ma'am, please, sir, when the baskets come by, if you can put something in the benevolent offering, amen. God will, will certainly appreciate it.
the Lord. In the Lord, Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am, <clears throat> for laboring to be a blessing to someone else through our benevolent offering. Amen. Amen. Let us now prepare our hearts to hear from this wonderful male chorus as they come to bless our hearts through song. I recommend him 
I recommend. I recommend. I recommend him. I recommend. I recommend. I recommend. I recommend him. I recommend. I recommend. I recommend him. I recommend. I recommend him. I recommend. I recommend him. I recommend. I recommend. I recommend him. Oh, he's able. I know he's able. He, he, he's able. I say he's able. Yes, he is. I, I said he's able. The Lord is able. Yes, he's able. Man. Yes, he is. Mary's baby. Yes, he is. Do you know him? I say, do you know him? He's able. Yes, he is. The Lord is able. Yes, he is. Mary's baby. A little baby. Have you tried him? I said, have you tried him? For he's able. Yes, he is. I recommend, I recommend him. you can do to anybody is recommend Jesus. We recommend a whole lot of stuff, but seldomly do we recommend Jesus, and he's the one that can meet all and any needs that we may need. Amen. 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 So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Brother Hopkins, featuring the male chorus. Amen. 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 We have a couple of uh, announcements. No, I'm sorry. Let us recognize our guests first. Amen. Amen. We, we have a dignitary in the house on this morning. Amen, and I'm pretty sure the pastor will will uh, will acknowledge and allow and all kind of other a words. Uh, amen. When he arrives, Senator West, it's good to see you this morning, sir. Amen. Amen. Uh, but any other guests, if we if you visiting with the Mount Tabor Church for the first time, we want to ask that you will stand right where you are so that you may be recognized as a guest here at our church. Any guests this morning? Amen. Amen. On the behalf of the 
pastor of this church, Dr. S.C. Nash, and the entire Mount Tabor Church family, we welcome you uh, to our house on this morning, to God's house on this morning. Amen. We thank, we are thankful that you have chosen to uh, make this your place of worship on this morning, and we hope that you would, uh, that something is said, something is done to not only make you feel welcome and comfortable, but that if you do not know the Lord, we recommend Jesus on this morning. Amen. Amen. And we dare. We would not uh, have you to leave here without at least introducing Jesus, just in case. Amen. You don't want to take for granted that everyone that's in the house is in the house. Amen. Amen. So thank you, sir, uh, for coming, uh, uh, coming this way this morning. Amen. 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 We now want you to focus your attention on the screens for our Shouts from the Mount video announcements. Welcome to Shouts from the Mount. Our theme for 2016 is Let Love Be, taken from Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 21, and 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Let's take our theme to heart and be walking examples of our theme scriptures. We will be worshiping with St. Matthews today at 3.30, and the male chorus will be singing. The IMA-sponsored Martin Luther King worship service will be on tonight at 7 p.m. The combined choir will be singing along with the praise dancers performing. Let's support our pastor by attending the worship. The Mount's praise dancers will be practicing every Saturday at 1 p.m. in preparation for Pastor Nash's anniversary services. You must make the practices in order to perform Please see Sister Franji Nash for more information. It's time to turn in your children's report cards to the church office or Sister Melanie Nash for honor roll recognition. Our Floor D. Harris Choir will be rehearsing on Wednesday at 6 p.m. and the Teenage Choir will be rehearsing this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Please have your child in attendance. Join us for our first 2016 ETW. The Fresh Wind service will take place the fifth Sunday of this month at 6.30 p.m. Save the dates for Pastor Nash's 28th anniversary celebrations. Sunday, February 7th will be the pre-anniversary at 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. worship hours. Our midweek pre-anniversary worship will be February 10th at 7 p.m. On Sunday, February 13th at 10 a.m., there will be a pre-anniversary breakfast. We will culminate Sunday, February 14th, anniversary services at 8 a.m., 11 a.m., and 3.30 p.m. We love you, Pastor Nash. Please come out and support our pastor. Here are this week's birthdays. You may contact the church office to sign up for any and all events via phone or email. And don't forget to follow us on social media. This has been your Shouts from the Mount. I am Tamala Williams, your announcer. Have a great day and a blessed week. Amen, amen. We ask that you would govern yourselves according to the announcements. Uh, and, uh, we are, uh, this is the Lord's Day all day. Amen. And we are busy all day today. <laughs> Thank you, buddy, for your amen. Amen. We have a 3.30 service and a 7 o'clock service. And we looking, we're looking for all of Mount Tabor uh, to make both services. Y'all, I recommend Jesus. Amen. Mount uh, St. Matthew's at 3.30 and then our annual IMA MA, ML King uh, service tonight here at our church. We would hate to have a house full of visitors and no one from Mount Tabor is in the house. Amen. So at least, at least, 
If you're going to pick and choose which one you're going to go to, come to 7 o'clock. Amen. 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 If you're going to pick and choose, if you're going to ride with us all day, then that's wonderful also. Amen. Amen. We have a thank you card uh, here. And it says, I want to thank you for your expressions of love, the cards, phone calls, and prayers. We greatly appreciate it. I prayed for healing and kept the faith, and God answered my prayers. I'm blessed to be here today because tomorrow, January the 11th, I will be 90 years old. He is an amazing God. This comes from Sister Geneva Taylor. Amen. 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 I, uh, I couldn't find you, I'm, but S Sister Taylor is over there to my right. 90 years old. Amen. We ought to give a hand just for, for 90. Amen. So happy, happy early birthday to you. And it's good to see you in the house on this morning. Also, we want to announce that our bus buses will be running today to the St. Matthew's Baptist Church. And they're leaving from the church at 3 o'clock. So if you want to uh, ride the bus, we ask that you will make yourself here uh, at our church at 3 o'clock uh, to catch the bus over to St. Matthew's. Amen. Also, let me take this time out to thank all of you who took out the time to pray for my in-laws. My mother-in-law was uh, admitted into ICU on last Monday, uh, and they're running tests trying to figure out exactly what's going wrong. Uh, but because of the prayers and because of your thoughts, uh, she was uh, released from ICU into a regular room. So I. I don't know how you feel about that, but I know that's a wonderful thing. First of all, just to get out of ICU. Amen. So thank you for your prayers, and I ask that you will continue to pray uh, for my mother-in-law as well as for my wife. Amen. As they're going through uh, their issues. Amen. We serve a God who is able to do all things. Amen. Amen. And the the, uh, the thing for us to do is to show some faith. Amen. Show some faith in the God that can do all things. Amen. Amen. We're now ready to hear once again from this male chorus. So give them another hand as they come to bless our hearts. Good morning, Mount Tabor. If you were here Tuesday night, the minister challenged all of the leaders, and he challenged all of us, really. And he came from 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. And it's just, I almost said coincidence, but it was just the Lord's will that that's the song that we had rehearsed. Okay, so that scripture says, The word of God is recorded. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unremovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord.
said I'm holding on. Yeah, yeah. Unmovable. Always. I promise you, Lord. I'm staying. Staying in your will. I'm staying in your will, Lord. Yes, I am. Say I am staying. Say I'm staying. Know that I'm staying. Stay right here, Lord. Do what you want me to do. Say what you want me to say. Go where you want me to go. I'm going to be right here, Lord. I'm going to stay right here, Lord. I'm going to stay right here, Lord. I'm going to stay right here, Lord. Lord. I ain't going nowhere. I'm gonna stay right here. I'm gonna stay right here. I ain't going nowhere. again, Mel of course, for that uh, inspiring selection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. There's no better place to be than in the will of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're now uh, up to our tithes and offering period. Amen. We did an all right job on last Sunday. I was looking for confirmation. Amen. 
but we are still we are still being blessed by the Lord day by day he has been good to each and every one of us we all get some kind of something whether it's weekly, bi-weekly, monthly whatever the situation may be the Lord has proved himself faithful to bless us and in return he asks we just give him 10% of our increase for the edification of his kingdom the furtherance of his kingdom here on earth that is what is called the tithe and the Bible clearly states that if we bring all the tithe into his storehouse, that he would open up the windows of heaven over our lives. And I don't know about you, but my life is the better because I am a faithful tither. Amen. And those of us that are going to stand right now that are tithers, committed tithers, faithful tithers, we all say the same thing, that the Lord has proven himself to be faithful. And he has opened up the windows of heaven over our lives and poured blessings because we have done what he has mandated for us to do. So as the tithers of Mount Tabor are standing, as always, we don't stand to boast or to brag, but it's simply a testimony of the goodness of God. Amen. If you have any questions, any queries about the tithe, ask any one of us that are standing what tithing has done for us in our lives. And I'm for sure that you will receive a praise report on the open window blessings that come our way because of being faithful tithers. So every Sunday we offer an opportunity to those of you who are still seated or have not yet made that decision to come on and join us in our tithing venture we promise you that it will bless your life if you make that commitment to become a tither so is there one who will make that commitment on this morning the second sunday of the of 2016 is a wonderful sunday to make a commitment to the lord that you will bring him his tithe is there one who wants to join us in our tithing venture? We ask that you would just stand right where you are so that you may be recognized as a tither here at the Mount Tabor Baptist Church. Is there one? Amen. Let us bow. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we come thanking you right now for just being so good to each and every one of us. Lord, we thank you for our increase and we bring you that which is your own the tithe plus an offering, Lord. And we ask that it will all be used for the building and the furtherance of your kingdom here on earth. Lord, we thank you for our tithers and ask that you will continue to prick the hearts and the minds of those that are yet still seated to come on and try your way. All these things we ask in your darling son, Jesus' name, and all who love the Lord said amen. 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 Uh, for this is tithes and offering time, so we're asking everyone to please stand and follow the directions of our ushers.
Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am, for what you do to support uh, the Mount Tabor Church financially. Amen. 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 We are now, it is now prayer time. Amen. Amen. We're asking that you would uh, stand and make your way to the altar or whatever your prayer posture may be. The male chorus reminded us earlier that that the Lord is able to do he's able to meet whatever your need may be we all have a different set of circumstances that we're dealing with what I know is that the Lord can work on each and every one of our behalves at the same time. Amen. So with all heads bowed and all hearts and minds focused on Calvary, let us go to the Lord in prayer. The Heavenly Father is us again, Lord. A few of your humble servants would bow down heads and humble hearts, Lord. We've come, first of all, Lord, just to say thank you. Thank you for our life. Thank you for our health. Thank you, oh God, for our strength. Thank you for a reasonable portion of health. Thank you, oh God, that you clothed us in our right minds. For oh God, we didn't wake up this morning and put our shirt on our legs. Oh God, you've been good. You've been faithful. You've been gracious. You've been merciful. And God, we just want to say thank you. Oh, Lord, we realize it's not because we've been so good or so kind. But, God, it's only because you are so good and so kind. Lord, we thank you for watching over us and, and keeping us and, and camping your angels around us and keeping us safe from all hurt, harm, or danger. Oh, Lord, it was you that watched over us on last night. It was, it was you that guided us to your house on this morning. It, oh, Lord, it was you. Who wrapped your loving arms around us. Lord, we realize we... We all could have been buried, dead and buried deep in our grave. But thank you, oh God, for making old death behave. And you allowed our golden moments to roll on just a little while longer. For Lord, there were some that were with us on last week who, who you saw fit to call home. But, oh God, you left us here for a reason. Lord, help us to realize what our, what our purpose is for being left here just another day. Oh God, we, we've gathered this morning with so many different sets of problems and 
circumstances. But God, we know that you can meet each and every need. So Lord, we ask right now that you would meet each need right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, someone gathered this morning whose body is wrecked with pain. Oh, Lord, we ask that you would heal right now in the name of Jesus. Someone's gathered with problems on every hand. And they just don't know which way to turn. Lord, we ask that you would grant direction right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, build us up where we're torn down. Strengthen us where we're weak. Lord, we ask right now that you would show up and show out in each and every one of our lives. Oh, Lord, we ask that you would stop by the hospital rooms. That you would touch those sick bodies right now from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. We ask, oh God, that you would touch the caregivers. Allow their minds to think clearly. Oh Lord, we ask that you would allow them to grant, give the medicine that is needed and, and not different medicine that would mess up all things, Lord. Touch the doctors right now in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, go throughout the emergency rooms and go to our jails and go to our homes, Lord, and, and make things right. Oh God, we lift up our pastor on this morning. Continue, oh God, to touch his body. Restore complete health right now in the name of Jesus. Help us all to be the men, the women, the boys, and the girls that you have called us to be. Lord, let our light so shine that some man, woman, boy, or girl may come running asking, what must I do to be saved? Lord, touch our leaders, not only of our community, not only of our city, but the leaders of our nation and the leaders of this world, so that they may be cognizant of your word, your will, and your way. Oh God, we ask right now that you would touch the preacher this morning. Give him a fresh word from on high that will speak to our each and individual situations. Oh Lord, we love you. And we ask that you would go with us and be with us and guide us and keep us as we go throughout our daily activities. Now Lord, we Thank you for all things. And after all is said and done on this side, we ask and pray that you will prepare a place for each and every one of us in your kingdom. That we all may dwell there forevermore. And we all will be so mindful to give your name all the praise and the honor. In the sweet and precious name of Jesus, we all pray. And all who love the Lord said amen. Amen.
Let us all stand as our pastor arrives into the sanctuary. Now let us receive the best dress, best looking, and if you're blessed to get close enough to him, the best, best smelling pastor on this side of heaven, the Dr. S.C. Nash Sr., as he comes to orchestrate the rest of service. Let us get a big amen for our pastor. Amen. Glad to have a former city councilman with us and his guests. Now you may be seated. Brother Caraway made a difference and from his run. For the commissioner, he aims to make a difference. Amen. We would to remember him. The Reverend Leslie Johnson is a plus to our church. He led us in our leadership Amen. workshop on yesterday, and it was a magnificent success. He's slated to preach this morning. I'm glad to have the help I have at this church. Uh, I am preaching at 11 and then at 3.30. And I just didn't want to tax myself. <laughs> Receive our assistant pastor of evangelism as he comes in his own way with the message. The Reverend Johnson's. Come on with an amen. Good morning to all and to our pastor, Pastor Reverend Dr. S.C. Nash Sr., to the assistant to the pastor, Pastor uh, Reverend Chuck Nash the second and to all the officers and members of the Mount Tabor Church, to the chairman of the deacon, the chairman of finances, and to all of God's children, uh, to the illustrious Royce West. And I was down on the uh, West End and I didn't realize how beautiful it was in that community, but then I saw your name splattered across it and amen. God bless you. You did a magnificent job. Uh, to uh, my Angel, my lovely wife of 48 years of marriage. Amen. I thank God for her being by my side and with me. Amen. Thank Pastor for this opportunity to stand before you on this morning. And the Lord is good. Amen. He is good all the time. And all the time the Lord is good. I won't be for you long if you brought your Bibles. If you turn to the book of 2 Kings, chapter 2. Beginning at the very first verse, down to the eighth verse. 
2 Kings chapter 2. If you have it, say amen. If you're still looking for it, look on the screens. Amen. And the scripture says, and it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into the heavens by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophet that were at Bethel came forth unto Lisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord would take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here. I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophet that were there at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee. Here for the Lord has sent me unto Jordan, to the Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as their soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And the two went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophet went, and stood and viewed afar off. And they too stood by Jordan. The last verse. And Elijah took his mouth and wrapped it together, and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so the two went over on dry ground. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this privilege. I ask God of you now that you stand up on my body. You speak to my mind. Use me for your glory. I'll be ever thankful. In your son's name I pray, amen. Just for a few minutes this this Sunday morning, this second Sunday in this brand new year, I want to lift from uh, these verses, particularly verse number seven, but I want to talk about everybody can't go where God is taking you. Everybody can't go where God is taking you. The young folk would say, everybody can't go. Everybody can't go where God is taking you. For the scripture says that 50 men of the son of the prophet went and stood to view afar off, and the two stood by the Jordan. And Elijah took up his mount and wrapped it together and smote the walls and they were divided hither and thither so that the two went over on dry ground. Elijah and Elisha had a unique relationship. Elisha saw something in this man, this prophet named Elijah that he desired to participate with. It was Elisha who saw something in this man of God that he desired, that he wanted. He wanted to be a part of his ministry, a part of his unique ability to do things for the master. He saw and respected and saw the anointing upon the life of Elijah. My brothers and sisters, you will never receive anything from a man or woman of God unless you respect the anointing upon their lives. 
many people will ask the question, how can they do what they do? How are they successful in their lives? And it's all because of the anointing upon them. Y'all know Elijah. You do remember uh, this brother by the name of Elijah. Elijah was the Tishbite. And his name means, my God is Jehovah. It was a time that his brother Elijah had did so many wonderful things. And this brother by the name of Elisha had taken note of how wonderful God was working in the life of Elijah. You remember that it was Elijah that stood before King Ahab and his wicked wife Jezebel and told King Ahab that it wasn't going to rain and it wasn't going to rain until God spoke to him and he spoke it to the prophet. And the Bible says that after Elijah had spoke to Ahab, God instructed him to go to a place called Cherub. And at Cherub they were there and he stood by the brook of Cherub until the water dried up. If I had time this morning, I would talk about how to survive in a dry place. The Bible said that Elijah had met a woman at Zarephath and requested of her that she would bring him a sandwich and some water because she had made a pact with her son that they would eat and drink and die. The Bible said that it was his brother Elijah who was so powerful that he went by another woman's house as they were journeying and the Bible said that she made a room on side of a house for the prophet. And while the prophet was there, he had prophesied to this woman and told her that she would have a child by this time next year. And the Bible said because Elijah was there at her home, she became pregnant. She did have a child, but the strange thing about this child, this child, this boy died. Elijah took this boy after she went to the field and called. Elijah said, this man, this boy child you've given me, he's died, he's now dead, and you caused me to be joyful, but now my boy is dead. Elijah leaves a field and makes his way back to the house and sees this dead boy, this corpse, and he picks him up and takes him upstairs to his room and lays him on the bed. And after the Bible says he got prostrate on top of the boy and he breathed into the nostrils of this boy and he did it three times and the boy came back to life. This was Elijah. After resurrecting this boy back to life, uh, the Bible says it was Elijah that challenged the prophets of Baal. You, you remember the prophets of Baal. Actually, they belonged to Jezebel. And at Mount Carmel, they were challenged because the Bible said that they were to make an altar before God. Not the God, but their God. And they began to pray. They laid the altar, the altar offering on the altar, and they began to pray to their God. And it was Elijah who told them, maybe your God is hard of hearing. Why don't you cry out the louder? Uh, or just maybe your God is on vacation. He's not near, and if you cry out some more, maybe he will come and answer your request. Uh, just maybe your God is somewhere else, and he's not listening to your request. Uh, but the Bible says that Elijah taunted them some more, and they began to cut themselves with knives. It was this brother by the name of Elijah. And the Bible says that he cleared the altar and then he put down his own sacrifice on the altar. And the Bible said that it was after he had dust, dusted with water and began to put 12 barrels of water on top of the altar that he prayed to God. And our God, his God, uh, Jehovah sent down fire, licked up the water and burned up the sacrifice. This was this brother by the name of Elijah. And because uh, Elisha saw something in Elijah, 
He desired that he was determined to stay in relationship with this man regardless of whatever it cost. Somebody may have said that Elisha was this preacher, prophet, flunking. That, that he was the pastor's boy. That he was a fool. That he was a punk. He was a buck kisser. But, but regardless of whatever they thought, it was Elisha that made up his mind to stay with this brother, this prophet by the name of Elijah. He stayed with Elijah. And when Elijah told Elisha to stay back in Bethel, the Bible said he refused to stay. So he went with him. He went over to Jericho. He refused to stay in Bethel. He went to Jericho. And every Every time the prophet Elijah told Elisha to stay behind, he said, As the Lord liveth, and my soul liveth, I will not leave thee. Each time the son of the prophet told Elisha, Listen, man, your Lord, your master is going to leave you behind this day. Listen to what Elisha said. He says, Y'all hold your peace. Because Elisha was determined to stay connected to his prophet, his mentor, by the name of Elijah. When Elijah smoked the Jordan River with his mantle, the Bible said the water parted hither and thither, and they walked over on dry ground. Elijah took his mouth, he wrapped it over, and they began to move over, and everybody saw what they were doing. And the Bible said that those 50 preacher's boys, those 50 preacher's sons, those 50 sons of the prophet, they saw it, but they saw it afar. They didn't go over with him. They, they did not experience it. They they saw it, but they didn't experience it. But only Elisha crossed over the Jordan with Elijah, and God was about to do something miraculous in his life, something new, something that Elisha said, I need to be a part of that. I want to be a part. I want to take place in my life. And since they are not going, I'm going over the Jordan with this prophet, this man of God, my mentor, my potentate. I'm going over with Elijah. And there they go. E -E Elijah had a wonderful experience for he went to Gilgal. And Gilgal was a place of beginning. He went to Bethel, which was a place of the altar. And even today, this brother by the name of Elijah has had a, a significant influence at Gilgal on the, by, by my father naming his church Gilgal Baptist Church. Every time that, that God was about to do something new in the life of Elijah, it was Elisha that experience it. I want to suggest to you that this morning that every time God is going to do something new in your life, whether it be you receiving a new anointing, you're going to the next level towards your destiny, or taking to a place, a new place of prosperity, remember everybody, everybody, say everybody, everybody cannot go where God is taking you. Can I get a witness right here? He, he took Elisha to Jericho. He took him to this place of battle. He took him to Jordan, to this place of that. It was God was moving Elijah to a place. But the text said that this brother Elisha, his mentor, was not going to leave the side of Elijah. And when God was going to do a new thing in his life, he wanted to make sure that he saw it. You know, God is always doing some new things in the life of, of believers. You, you remember re reading in the Bible, the Bible says when God was getting ready to do a new thing in the life of Moses, he called him to the backside of the desert and told Moses to take off your shoes. Because you're standing on 
holy ground. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all do remember that, don't you? You remember this brother by the name of Jacob? He was a trickster. He was a surplanter. And, and the point of his life, he was trying to get over. But the Bible said that he had a wrestling with an angel. He said, I won't let you go until you bless me. Every time God was going to do something new in the life of the believer, he took them by themselves. <coughs> Can I get a witness right here? And I've come to tell somebody from my table, church, God is getting ready to do a new thing in your life. God's going to take you to a place that nobody else can go but you. So if you don't mind, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I feel sorry for you, but you can't go with me. I've got to go all by my glory to God. For you do, you do know that some people, some people will not be able to handle the blessing and the prosperity that God has placed upon in your life. Everybody, everybody is not happy for you when you are blessed. Uh, there are some folks that hang around you, they, they like you, they talk good about you. But the moment God blesses you, the moment God anoints you, the moment God sets you apart, they get upset, get mad, get angry, start looking down. Talking about you. Remember everybody can go where God is trying to take you. God is trying to position you. But trying to position even the my table church. For he is setting us apart to do something new in our life. But if you're not careful people will mess you up. People will mess you. You up. I, I, I don't want you to miss it because sometimes we get in the habit of blaming the devil for everything. The, the devil did this and the devil did that and the devil did this. And I want to tell you, it's not always the devil. Sometimes it's the folks that you hang around with. It's the folks that you run with, the folks that you talk to, and the folks that you gossip with. Remember, the devil does something, but sometimes those Negroes that you hang with, they are the ones that's messing up your life. For people will mess up your anointing. They will stop your blessing, even keep you from reaching your next destiny. For people can mess up your life. For there are at least four kinds of people. There are people that will add to your life. There are people that will subtract from your life. There are people that will divide you. There were people, there are people that will multiply you. But here it is, don't miss this. Remove those jokers that are subtract and divide. You only want the folks that are, that are around you that would add and multiply. Can I get a witness right here? For, for, for those who will subtract will slow down your progress and the possibility of even trying to stop you from going where God is trying to take you. You, you, you don't want people that, that tolerate you to be in your presence. You, you want some folks that uh, elevate you and uh, appreciate you. You don't want folks that just tolerate being around you. You want somebody that's going to lift you up. Can't get a witness right here. Just remember, I told you earlier, everybody's not going to be happy. When God blesses you, everybody's not going to be smiling and, and gleeful because God has made a way out of no way for your life. Remember that everybody that you run with ain't got your best interest. Some people hang around you just because you are blessed. Can I get a witness right here? There are some people who will tell you that they love you, but today, the but they'll turn on you tomorrow. It's like the person that says, I love you, and starts grinning in your face. Then they go on Facebook and write some disparaging marks about you, just like you don't read Facebook. You, you remember Joseph Brothers, don't you? That they had no problem with him on the day he was born. In fact, they celebrated his birth. But, but once they realized that he was their father's favorite son, 
the apple of their father's eye. His father had gave him a coat of many colors. They became jealous of their own brother. Some people will have no problem as long as you stay on the same level as they are on. But the moment you start dreaming, the moment you want to be better, the moment you want to run for something, the moment you got a dream and a vision, they will turn their backs on you. They will rise up against you. Some people love being around you as long as you are not a threat to them. As long as you're not trying to raise up your own kingdom. Can I get a witness right here? But, but the moment you blossom, the moment you get up, the moment God does things in your life, they will start backbiting on you. Once God bless you with another home, another car, another position, another man, another woman, all hell would break loose. Can I get a witness right here? I, I don't mean any harm, but, but everybody, look at somebody and say, everybody. Everybody, everybody, ever, ever, everybody don't like you. I, I, know, I know you've got this illusion that you come to church and you smile at folks, you all Christian, you're all sanctified, you got your church to go to meeting, clothes on, but I want to tell you, let me bust your bubble. Everybody don't like you. I know that y'all came on the parking lot together, walked through those doors together, but here it is. Everybody don't really like you. You, 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 you need to understand that everybody just ain't feeling you. They, they, they. They are not, not feeling you. You need people in your life that will celebrate you. People in your life that will help lift you up. You need people who will rejoice when you're blessed. People who will celebrate you and your victories and your promotion. You need to have people around you when you get blessed. They will call their friends and say, hey, my sister, my brother, just got blessed. Come on and celebrate with me. Come on and let's rejoice. Let's have a show no party because God has blessed them. Can I get a witness right here? But I've come to tell somebody this morning that there are some people that you've got to just get out of your life. I didn't get too many amens right there. You've got to get some folks. You know who they are. I ain't got to tell you who they are. You already know who they are. You, you, you know that they've been messing up. You know that they ain't no good. They, you know that they've been talking about you. You know that. they always borrowing your money, but you can't never borrow their money. You know who they are. Y'all got quiet on me right there. I understand. I, I only got about 45 more minutes to be up here. But come on now, help me, help me, help me. For it is our God that, that takes, takes pleasure in your, our prosperity. The, the Bible said, let the Lord be magnified, which is his pleasure in his prosperity of his servant. You, you do know that the Lord really wants to bless you, don't you? You know that God has his eyes on you, that God wants to bless you, that God wants to do a new thing in your life. It is our God that looks from heaven and sees you and he says, I want to bless you because you've been faithful, you've been fair, you've been loving, you've been kind, you've been understanding, and I want to bless you. But here it is, there are some folks around you that don't want you to to be blessed, but I'm so glad that what God has for me, it is for me. And, and, and can't nobody stop God from blessing you. That's in their mind, that's in their thought process. But whatever God has for you, it is for you. The Bible says, the Bible says that these men, these 50 preacher's boy, these 50 sons of prophets, they did not go over on the other side. So therefore, they missed out on how Elisha was blessed by hanging with Elijah. I want you to get there now. The Bible said they saw it from afar. They went so far, but they were not willing to go all the way. 
I, I really want you to get this. Because too many women, particularly, ain't after nobody. Too many women, particularly, when somebody walks out of your life, you try to beg him back. When he walks out of your life and leaves you with the children in his mind that you're going to beg him to come back. And the reason that most, most men think that way is because you've done it so many times. Before, why y'all so quiet? I'm, I'm not talking, talking about you. I'm just talking what I'm talking about. But I've come to tell you: is quit begging folks to stay with you. <laughs> quit begging folks to stay in your life, brothers. If she want to go. Just, just let her go. Amen. Quit, quit, quit tr trying to keep folks in your life. Just let them go. They, they are not holding on to your vision, your dreams, or what God is trying to take you, and you trying to hold them on, hold on to them. Just let them go. So tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you might have to go. You, you just might have to get out of my life. Don't mean any harm, but, but sometimes you got to let folks go. Listen to this. Don't miss this. An uh, exit door. An exit door is sometimes a better blessing than an entrance door. Sometimes you got to let some folks just just, just let them walk. Just let them walk. Those feet are meant for. <laughs> just, just let them walk. And it's scriptorial. Here it is. I, I, I know I don't want you to just leave out there. And I'm just making up some stuff. It's in the book. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 2 verse 19. The Bible said they went out from us. But they were not of us. And if they had been of us they would have no doubt have continued with us. But they went out and that they might be made manifest that they were not of us at all. In other words, uh, if they were really for me, if they were really for you, they would have stayed with you. So about somebody walk out of your life, just, 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 just let them, just let them. Same God that's been taking care of you all that time. He'll continue taking care of you. Now, I don't want to stay there too long because I want nobody fussing at me. Amen. But sometimes God is starting another chapter in your life. Your, your destiny is not tied to somebody who walks out of your life. You, you really don't need them. You need a God who can continue to open up all kinds of doors. Can I get a witness right here? And, and leaving you is not necessarily, again, a bad thing. The Bible said that Jesus had 12 disciples and even one of them was a devil. When people misjudge you and portray you, sometimes they have to move on from around you. You don't want to waste your time defending your actions and your behavior to people. If they don't understand who you are, where you're going, then they just don't understand. But remember, uh, don't let them become bitter and don't you get bitter because they don't understand you. Sometimes God is saying, I need to let you know that if I brought you, I will carry you to where I want you to go. The, the Bible says, speak not 
into the ears of a fool. For he will despise the wisdom of thy words. Let me just say it one more time. Speak not in the ears of a fool. Not in the ear, but in the ears of a fool. For he will despise thy wisdom of thy words. Proverbs 23 and 9. My, my advice is you ought to turn your haters into your elevators. Uh, the, the, don't let your haters pull you down. Don't, don't let your haters jack you down. Uh, instead, make them a stepping stone that, that you can take, that they can take you to a higher level by stepping on them. You remember that our God is an able God, a wonderful, caring God, a loving God, and everybody that, that's with you don't really want you to be blessed. But here it is. Don't miss it. You need some show enough, friends that care about you. Then you need some show enough. Is that, that a word, show enough? So you need some show, 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 show enough friends. Some, some stick to it, the friends. Some, some, some friends that will stick closer than a brother. You need some show enough friends. But the Bible says, the Bible says in essence that even Jesus had a brother that was a trickster even amongst them. You remember that God told Abraham that I want you to break free from your, your disconnection with your family. I want you to go to a place that I really want to show you. So my brothers and sisters, let me just come down and tell you that every now and again, you've got to understand that you've got to grow. You can't stay where you are all the time. You've got to be willing to grow. And in this Christian life, you've got to be willing to grow. You do remember that when you were 10, that your foot size was not the same size that it is today. Because if it is, something wrong with your growth. You're not wearing the same dress size you wore when you were 10. If it is, something is wrong with your Dress side, your growth process. The Bible says, unless uh, in book of Amos chapter 3, verse 3 said, how can two walk together unless they agree? So my first point, and all that was for free up front. My first point. You need people in your life who are, who are of like faith. People of faith do not say, hold the fort. But they shout, let's possess the land. People of faith do not focus on giants, but they focus on the grapes. People of faith do not look at the storms, but they look at the rainbow. People of faith will tell you that if God said it to you, I'm trusting what God said it to you, and let's go do it. They declare that that whatever God has spoken to your life, whatever God has told you in your life, let's make it happen. People of faith realize that you cannot keep walking down the same path, never changing, never doing anything different. They said if God is for us, he's more than the whole world against us. And if God is on our side, who can be against us? Secondly, secondly, you need people in your life who do not see where you are, but they see where you're going. Y'all need to get that. You need people who just not looking where you are, but they can see where you are going. They understand that, that there's a place in your life that the end result is where God is really trying to take you. For the Bible says in the book of Rebekah, chapter 2, verse 3, it says, For the vision is not yet upon a time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Can I get a witness right here? 
So I've come, I've come to tell you, I've come to tell you that we have a good God. My third point, and you know what it is in the black church and the black preacher, you get down to point number three, you're just about done. My third point, you need people to hear a prophetic word on your behalf. You need people to hear a prophetic word on your behalf. And I'm a true Baptist man. I'm a true Baptist dog. I've been Baptist all my life. I was Baptist born, Baptist bred. I'm going to die Baptist. But you need folks who can speak positively in your life. Can you with a witness right here? I, I know that in the Baptist church, we don't believe in a prophetic voice. But I got news for you. A prophetic voice is a true voice. You need people who can speak. Speak a word into your life. Now, you need people who understand that God is still talking. God is still doing some miraculous thing. Don't, don't, don't miss it. You need folks to understand that they can prophesy in your life. And if they don't do it, you've got to do it for yourself. Every now and again, you've got to talk to yourself. Every now and again, prophesy to yourself. Pray uh, for yourself. Preach for yourself, preach to yourself, sing to yourself, talk to yourself, and even lay hands on yourself every now and again. Do something for your. As I close, everybody didn't cross the Jordan River. Everybody did not pick up the mount of Elijah. But Elisha and Elijah crossed the Jordan and only Elisha picked up the mantle. Every bird has the ability to fly. But no bird can fly as high as the eagle. The eagle is a different bird. It can soar into the heavens. And just like the eagle, you and I are different. We're able to, to not hang around in low places. We are created to soar into the heavens. So, so tell your neighbor, neighbor, I'm going to a place that everybody can go. As I take my seat. This brother Elisha told Elijah that I'm not going to leave you until you bless me. Fifty men went over to the bank but only two went across. Fifty prophets went over but only Two saw the miracles. And the Bible said that when the cherub and the fire of God came down and picked up this man, Elijah, it was Elisha that looked up toward heaven and told God, I want you to bless me. I want you to bless me because I saw what my mentor did. I want you to bless me. And the Bible says that it was his desire to receive a double portion of Elijah's anointing. You, you, remember, it was, you remember that it was always something going on in the life of Jesus. You remember when Jesus had told his disciples he was going to die. The disciples says to Jesus, no Lord, you're not going to die. But he spoke to Peter and told Peter, you get behind me. Because it is my desire to do the will of him that sent me. So my brother and sister, yes, it was Elisha that picked up the mound of this prophet by the name of Elijah and the Bible said he took, took the, the mound and he smoked the water and it hither and thither and they, he walked over on dry ground. Don't, 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 don't miss this. It's very important. Don't, don't miss this because he had received the anointing of Elijah. That he was able to do some of the same things that Elijah did. 
So my brothers and sisters, I've come to tell you that there is anointing in the building. There is an anointing in this place. And I've come to tell you, hang around folks that want you to be blessed. Because in this anointing, God is getting ready to do a new thing in your life. He's getting ready to open up some doors in your life. I've come to tell you the reason I know it's a fact because the Bible said that early on, on Friday, they took our Savior out to a hill called Calvary. They hung him wide and they stretched him wide and hung him high. He, they took him out to Calvary on Friday and the Bible said he spoke seven times from the cross. The last word he says is finished. Into thy hands I commend my spirit. Everybody couldn't go. Only Jesus had to die for all of us. He died on Friday. What I like about it, he didn't stay dead. For early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. Because everybody can't go where you're going. Be blessed in the Lord. The doors of the church stand open. Having heard this powerful message. The Bible said and they believed his report. Do you believe? Everybody can't go where you're going. Get on the right foot, accept Christ today. If you already know him and the Spirit is leading you to unite with this church, come on. Candidate for baptism by letter, by Christian experience, for watch care, for restoration. The Lord is waiting on you. Is there one? Are there some? Johnson, we thank you for letting the Lord use you. And the message we receive. Amen. Sister Daniels, share with me. 
Pastor Nash, the Mount Tabor family, visitors and friends. We have our own sister Michelle McCarthy that's coming this morning. She's requesting prayer for her daughter and also for herself. All right. Sister Lias came to support Michelle. Bow with me. O oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name in the earth. And how marvelous is the privilege to approach you. We come praying for Michelle, praying for her daughter. Move in that relationship to mend the brokenness. Save, O oh Lord, save the child. Strengthen the mother. You know better than we what the need is and so we ask in Jesus' name that you would meet the need and the needs of this mother and daughter amen amen but it's going on Walk Michelle back to her seat. Listen, we're already into Sunday school time. Brother Senator, I, I didn't see you. And I don't want to say you were too close because we encourage closeness. I, I want the senator and and Brother Kerwood to come and say a word. You don't have to. All right? Do you have to? Come on. Why don't we say amen? Amen. And uh, you know that this is what Sunday? Love off the sun, yeah. Hallelujah. Love off. Let's take it. Let's take it. Let's take it. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Giving honor to God, I, uh, you know that I'm running for county commissioner, those of you that may know. Uh, I don't campaign in church, and I didn't come here to campaign, so I'm not going to take it into the politics. Uh, I come to, to worship, and, and Mount Tabor is, is one of my favorites because we have the, 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 the most honorable and the toughest preacher that this city has ever seen and leader <laughs> in Dr. Stephen Nash. You're kind. You're kind. Just want to say that and be here and just keep me up in prayer doing this campaign. It's simply time uh, for me to take it to another level. Yeah. Pastor, I just can't keep all of this energy put up on the shelf. We still have a lot to do here and I still have a lot to give. So I just pray for me as we move through the campaign. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Caraway. But Caraway did a fine job as city councilman. And we won't forget that. He makes a run for the county commissioner and bear his record in mind as we go to the polls. That's, that's fair, isn't it? Yeah. We got to have both of you the senator and the guests, the senator and the, the almost commissioner. That's the positive side of it. 
sharing in worship. Now, Pastor Zaid is coming. Good morning, Mount Tabor. Good morning, Mount Tabor. Listen, this is the second Sunday of a brand new year. We have another opportunity to worship the Lord and to serve him by serving our pastor. This is Love Offering Sunday. And before I go any further, thank you so much. He's gone now, but thank you so much for that sermon because it goes right along with what we're supposed to be doing. Everybody can't go with you. But there are some of us who can go and who can come to the front and share what you have with our pastor because we got a good pastor. We got one who preaches us to us and teaches us the word. So there's no other reason in the world why we should be sitting on our seats. Whatever it is that you have that you can share, just come forward and give it today. And he's going to love you and we're going to love you too. Thank you so much. We thank you, Sister Fagan and uh, Sister McCoy for standing with baskets. Uh, please understand our, our guest that Mount Tabor has decided that once a month, and this is the second Sunday, they would express their love for their pastor. Amen. We are there. Follow the directions of our ushers. They're asking everybody to stand now and come reverently with your gifts. want to praise you Thank you so much for your kindness. Uh, do we have the Nurses Guild represented here this morning? No? Right. Let's pray for Reverend Johnson. Oh Lord, thank you for the gifts. Thank you for people who expresses their love for their leader. Thank you for being so good to us. We pray now for Reverend Johnson that he would know healing in his body. In Jesus' name. 
And now may the grace of God, communion of his spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. You dismissed.